Okay, so I got my roller here. Uh, I've got a 3 8 uh, nap on my roller. That's what I like. It leaves a nice uh, wall finish. Um, at the hardware store, there's many to choose from. If you're having problems uh, figuring out which one to use, they generally say right on them what they're good for and what type of surface they're going to leave. This was for a fine surface and good coverage. So uh, pick your roller accordingly to what you're doing. And it is hard sometimes because some paints uh, act different than other paints. So it's a little bit of trial and error. If it seems like it's not working that well for you with the type of roller you got, or the type of brush that you got, then go get a different one because sometimes that makes a difference on uh, how well the paint applies. When I'm working with a new roller, I like to uh, really fully saturate it before I get going. So that looks pretty good. I'll spin it to get all the paint clung on it. Now, when I bring this roller up to the wall, if I was to put the roller down low and, and roll up with it, it will spin this way and it'll shoot paint off of it. So when I take my roller out, I always like to start up and pull down because it stops the splatters from, from leaving the roller and landing on the floor. So, Now what I look, my, my objective when I'm painting is to get as much paint on the wall. So from here to here, I'll try to get as much coverage on the wall uh, with the paint and then I'll back roll and go over the whole thing to smooth it all out. And then I'll take about another four foot section, get it all coated up and then work it back and back roll it. So it's just a more effective way than working on one little area and getting it to where you want. It's faster to get as much paint on the wall as you can and then back row. Okay, so I've got sufficient cover here now. I'm going to basically start here and work my way out and I'll call this section finished and then carry on. Okay, so that looks pretty good for a first coat. Uh, you can see it along the bottom here that uh, it's definitely drying different where my overspray was. So um, just as I suspected, going to need a second coat, maybe even a third. Some of the primary colors are a little harder to paint. Um, also another thing that I've noticed is um, with the primer, the tinted primer that I had on before, I wasn't able to see a couple of screw holes that I've also got a patch up, so there's kind of one there that's shrunk back a little bit and another one right there. So, um, 
like I said, the more time that you take and more things that you notice as you're going through the painting process, the better your walls will end up being at the end. So uh, again, once this is dry, I'm gonna go through, check for areas like these screws to patch back in. Um, then I'll give it a light sanding again with my pole sander and hopefully get one more coat on and hopefully that's the last one. If I do spot some more deficiencies that I want to take care of, um, then I'll be putting on a third coat. So, um, hope this was helpful.